hi, I want to do an overview of Ableton's utility plugin and show you a few cool things you can do um, that I find really useful when mixing in live. Uh, this isn't going to be a really in-depth overview of all its functionality, but I will very quickly just introduce the features that are there. We've got a mute button, which I honestly don't use, and we've got a removal of a DC offset. That's quite useful when you're recording with cheaper equipment. Uh, DC offset, uh, stands for direct current, is a, um, a low frequency that can reduce your headroom. It can often be found when recording with cheaper equipment. We've got a simple gain, uh, a linear gain um, boost and removal, uh, which is quite useful for doing automation. I find that more useful than using Ableton's faders for automation. And we've also got a channel mode where we can listen to just the left, just the right, or the stereo image, or an inversion of that. We've also got a panorama or pan control. And very usefully, we've got this width control where we can listen to just the mid signal, the original signal, and just the sides and any variation of that. Uh, the mid signal is anything which is identical in the left and right speaker, and the sides is anything which is different in the left and right speaker. Um, we can also invert the left and right channels uh, phase, or, or, or invert their polarity rather, which will change the phase relationship with each other. Um, so let's just have a look at a couple of effects racks I've built. Um, this is just a very simple way of splitting our low frequencies, mids, and highs. And um, I'm using the multiband dynamics without doing any compression whatsoever. Just in the, in the low channel, I've soloed the lows. In the mids, I've soloed the mids. And in the highs, I've soloed the high frequencies. You can change the crossover frequencies if you wish to do so as well, but I've just left them as they are. The reason I'm doing this and not using a filter is because um, the multiband dynamics, I believe, is um, phase coherent, so you're not going to get any weird problems. By doing this, not only can we very quickly um, listen to our low frequencies, mids and highs, but also as you can see in the low channel, I've stuck a utility plugin with the width reduced to zero. What this will do is ensure that everything below 120 hertz is in mono, um, and it's really important to have a, uh, a good um, mono image, uh, particularly in the lower frequencies. Um, so if anything, some to mono later, you won't get really bad phasing problems. And there's all sorts of other historic reasons why that's useful. So that's just really simple. You can just create chains by right clicking or control clicking. And you can just add a multiband dynamic, soloing the relevant band. There's other things you could do here, but I'm just doing this in order to simply monoize everything below 120 hertz. There are other plugins that can do this. I think there's something by Brainworks and there's all sorts of mastering tools, but I find that really useful. The other one I want to show you is just a simple plugin just to check my mids, sides, and my simple stereo image. And I'll just tend to stick this on my master channel after, after a limit or anything like that. So the way this is set up is that, again, we've got three chains and the stereo chain, um, the sound will just pass straight through. As you can see, there's no effects there. And that's turned on with the sides and the mids turned off. Now, in order to listen to the mids, we can just hit solo and you'll see we've got a utility plugin with the width reduced to zero. And in the sides, we've got a utility plugin with the width set to 200. Um, and you can very clearly hear in the mids, if, you, if you're listening on um, headphones or decent speakers, in the mids, we've got your drums, vocals, bass, pretty much everything. And in the sides, we've still got a little bit of the bass's um, sort of mid-range and upper frequencies, um, some more of the sort of backing vocals and other effects and things like that. So that's a very easy way to check what you're doing. Now, if you combine that with um, Ableton's EQ plugin, which can be run in mid-side mode, uh, if we listen to our sides, for example, we can set up, sorry, let me uh, turn that off. We can set up a high pass just in the side channel and you can hear what's happening there. But when we put it back to our normal stereo image, you can hear the original track um, with the mids and sides in together. So there's loads of other really useful stuff you can do with this. Like I said, I'm not gonna go through um, all the functionality, but um, really useful tool, very similar to Logic's uh, Gain plugin, I think it's called. And I find myself using it more and more for volume automation, um, phase inversion, and um, isolating the left or right channels. Uh, very quickly on that, I've got a famous breakbeat here. Uh, you can 
look and hear that the left and right channels are very different um, by isolating the left channel. We've got the kick and snare with some of the rack tom sound and in the right channel we've got a lot more kick and hi-hat. Um, so that's a great way of isolating um, particular parts of uh, clips, particularly if one channel is very different to another, like in many old breakbeats. Anyway, that's all. If there's any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, at some point, I might um, get around to writing an article and just uploading these instrument uh, effects racks rather, but they're quite simple. You should be able to put them together yourself. Thanks very much.